What's up guys, I'm back with another video. I'm gonna title this one, The Day in the Life of a Self-Employed Mechanic, because we got a lot of stuff going on today. I could really use a hand, but you know, I don't have anyone working with me, so I'm just gonna bring you along. This is gonna be, we're gonna do a lot of fun stuff today. We're doing a lot of diagnosis, we're doing some brake stuff, we're doing some hub stuff, we got some uh, service info brought up, uh, basically, it's like 12 o'clock in the afternoon because I wasn't really feeling that good last night and I didn't really sleep, so I slept really, really late, which is really stupid of me because I have a lot to do today. There's like four cars here. There's a car down the road I'm working on. I have to pick up a car, but I'm going to bring it along. It's going to be fun. We're going to bang this out in like six hours. It's going to be a great day. Nice little note from my customer. This car I have to go pick up down the road. It's not too far. Then I'm gonna jog over there. Um, this I am flaring brake lines on. My buddy is nice enough to let me use his space down the road because I literally have no more room outside, even in my driveway. I'll just show you. This truck, Dodge Ram, came in last night. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff wrong with it. Squeaky hub. Um, Check engine light on. I threw a code reader on it last night. I think like every single O2 sensor is out. Speed sensor, um, bunch of stuff. This is the Jeep key right here. This car, I filled the AC up about maybe two weeks ago. And he brought it back to me. It's completely empty. So I don't know. There's some leak somewhere. When I turned on the fan, I, I thought I smelled it coming through the, through the uh, vent. So... I don't know. We're going to go sniff around in the evaporator. I was messing with it last night. It was definitely low on refrigerant, so I jacked it up. I want to stick my sniffer in through the AC drain hose, but it's like, really, it's like buried under all this crap. So I took the uh, resistor out of the uh, blower motor, and we're just going to sniff around in there. So when you only have one bay... I used to use this bay too, but I ended up having so much equipment that I kind of needed as much room as I can. So when you have one bay, you're really forced to work in your driveway a lot. So get this Mazda 3 over here. I got it braced up because there's no motor mounts in, but it's got a bay torque converter, I think. You start it off, it's making some crazy noise, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's coming from the torque converter. So I'm kind of just waiting for approval on this one. This is that Dodge that showed up last night. Here's another Toyota Camry. Blown head gasket. Basically what happens with these is it, there's dissimilar metals in the head and in the block. And what happens is the head starts to swell and the studs, I'm sorry, not the studs, the head bolts um, literally strip right out and it literally picks up the head and moves it upwards. So if you, you do a compression test on this, it has absolutely nothing. This motor will not even run. Um, when it came in, it had coolant all over to the right side, which is kind of weird. You know, when, you know, at least when the water pump blows or something, usually, you know, the belt wings it and you'll see it on this side but you know i put a leak down test on and the air is just pouring out so i actually quoted him on a head gasket job he's told me to do it so i literally started doing it right as i'm about to probably take this head off and start going into the timing cover he texted me and said he wants to get a whole new motor for it so i'm waiting for i don't know i don't know what i'm waiting on i guess i'm waiting on him for this one um that's my baby. Nothing wrong with her, that's my car. But anyway, so we got one, two, three cars outside, one car on the lift, one car down the road, and I have to go pick up a car today. Gonna be a good day. This is the transmission from that Mazda. This is the oil pan from the Mazda. I gotta put in the parts washer. This is all the stuff from the Toyota. I mean, Yep, working by yourself. Gotta love it. 
already got some info out for the Dodge. Some service info. I'm going to go through this later. But anyway. This is how I found my evaporator leaks. So this thing's been running for probably 10 minutes. I filled it up. We have good pressures. You guys can see that. Pressure's going. Let's see if we can have a look. Take this out. So I can get into that. That would sit right in there. Oh yeah. I'm not touching anything with the probe. That's very important. Oh yeah. Right in that corner. I, I'm in like a little corner right now. Oh yeah. Look at that. Off the chain. Yeah, we have an evaporator leak. Now with the resistor out, you can only put the fan on high. And if the fan was on high blowing over the tip of this, you'd get a terrible false reading. See that? So you gotta make sure, you know, you wanna make sure there's never anything blowing over these tips. Oh yeah. Okay, so I have to flare these lines up. Uh, this is off the truck down the road. Um, basically, if you could see right there, there's a nice little hole in it. So basically, it's clean up here. This is along the frame rail that goes down towards the back. So it's it's all clean up here. So we're gonna cut it here and we're gonna replace the whole brake on.
There's the new one, and there's the old one. Looks pretty damn good to me. Okay, I got the lines on. They look really good. Put a master cylinder in it, too. All right, I got this Elantra here. Just ran down the street to go get it. It wasn't too far. I can hear the belt squeak when it started. She said it was creaking in reverse. The cigarette lighter doesn't work. Here, a little, uh, sounds like a pulley, maybe. Hundred nine thousand. Oh, I hear something. I'm gonna drive this back, put it on the lift, take a look at it. It almost sounds like a like a brake shim. Cleaned everything off, greased up. Okay, guys. Got to the fuse box, and what do you know? She got two blown fuses. So she either stuffed out her cigarette lighter and popped it, or there's a short somewhere. But probably just these fuses. They both popped. Suspicion was right. Needs a wheel bearing. Needs an upper ball joint on this side. It's really bad. There's our O2 problems. This one's just sheared right off. The wires are just dangling. And the same with the other side. Just sheared it right off. I don't know. But it also needs a wheel bearing. And it also needs a driver front ball joint. It's really bad. 
Got some parts here, ran out real quick. Store's not too far. Obviously the parts guys don't come to the, my house, but uh, I got the belts for the Hyundai. These 202 sensors are for the Dodge Ram outside. Uh, these are the rears. Um, this is an upper O2 sensor because I wasn't sure if we were gonna need one, but I don't think we're gonna need one. This is the hub. Uh, I'm gonna throw these on real quick because I believe she's coming to get the car in like an hour. And um, yeah, hopefully I'm gonna take that exhaust out of the, of the Dodge. Never a good day when the air hammers out. These things were all destroyed, rusted. Torch on, had the air hammer, all of this, but we got it off. Gotta take these out. Uh, possibly thread some new bungs in there. But I'm done for the day. I am shot. Ugh. Got it all off. No more exhaust. Yeah, I'm shot. I'm done for the day. Truck runs good, by the way. The brake lines worked out real well. Sold the evaporator job, too, which is great. <laughs>